Japan. I'm not happy, William. Neither am I. There is a crisis brewing in the world of Junior Eurovision with ratings hitting an all-time low. No, all no. All-time low in the Netherlands and in... Everywhere. Italy. Well, <laughs> Poland, it was at an all-time high. But overall, the trend is definitely down. In any case, I want to know, how can we save Junior Eurovision? Are you ready to talk about it? Let's do this! Now, Devin, I'm going to kick it off with what I think is my strongest point, the thing I believe in the most. Junior Eurovision should be a show for kids, watched by kids, and judged by kids. I do not like the fact that... An and staged by kids. Yeah, I don't think an adult jury should tell children what is good music. If this is a kids' singing contest, let the kids decide. When you were a kid, did you like adults telling you what to do? No. <sighs> Do you like adults telling you what to listen to? No. So why should we tell your children adults are going to tell you what the best song is? It makes no sense to me. This has always been my biggest problem with Junior Eurovision. I mean, they've gone as far as having Kitty spokespersons. So why not have Kitty's presenters, for instance? Another good point. Kids should host Junior Eurovision. The hosts this year, abysmal. I it, th that's the thing. If, if if they did a good job, you could argue and say, well, because they've done a good job, that's why it should firmly be controlled by adults and pre or presented by adults. But honestly, Lizzie Pop from Georgia could have she done a to... much better show. <laughs> Lizzie Pop in Georgia needs to host Junior Eurovision 2017. Look, the best hosts of Junior Eurovision have been those who tried to relate to children. Polly Genova. She had the dress song. She made an effort to be crazy and wild. She related to children, so and it worked. And she was a JSC so star as yeah. well. You know, she was. She did attempt to represent Bulgaria at Junior Eurovision. Bon so. Bon, the children. Yeah, too. exactly. So There was relevance. Yeah. Yeah, but this year, honestly, the hosts were just really... They weren't funny. They were stiff. They were, you know... I loved at one point Ben Camille, he told the audience, you know, let's get loud, you know, and then say it with me. And then he said, what did I say? As opposed to saying, let's get loud again. It was all about him. There's a bit of a vanity going on. Um, it looks hot, though. I give him that. Being hot is not the sole criteria of being a host, and I don't actually think he's that hot. In any case, what? let's go back to my first point, though. Do you think children should judge the song exclusively? Yes, why not? Yeah, completely. It's a song for them, and they're going to be the ones downloading it. Ultimately, you don't want low ratings for a show. It's, it signals the end of the road. So to rescue this, you really need to make some radical changes. And the radical changes is actually in the title. Junior Eurovision. Ju Keep it junior. Honey. Another thing, the parade of contestants this year. Ah, oh, the ribbon. Listen, what I didn't oh. like, I feel like TVM spent a lot of money on that large ornamental ribbon going up the stage, and they wanted to show it as much as they could. So during the parade of contestants, rather than focusing the camera on the children coming out with the flag, it would be like, Australia, flash to the ribbon. You know, Serbia, flash to the ribbon. So half the time, you didn't even see the kid, or you did for a split second. The shots were too far back, again, to show the ribbon, but not to show the performers. This is all about the kids. And what's deeply upsetting is that, yeah, Junior Eurovision has prizes for the first, second, and third but you know there are potentially well this year there were 14 other contestants who didn't get any kind of prizes so actually airtime is crucial it's everything yes, that's you know, your prize show them get a cameraman to pan from backstage focusing on the act as they walk through and greet the fans that is what camera work is I don't see why this digital ornamental ribbon oh. needs to kind of take centre yeah. stage. Children, the people you should be reaching, want to see the other children who are competing, not some big digital ribbon, which frankly didn't actually look that good. When you panned out, did nothing for me in the print. Oh, actually, actually when you panned out, you just saw how empty the arena was. Tickets were too expensive. I mean, again, children should not have to pay 75 euros, 100 euros, whatever it was. We've got to talk about the elephant in the room. We can't vote. You can't vote! <laughs> Why would you watch a show if you can't vote? American Idol, X Factor, Pop Idol, all The Voice, all of the shows that people really get behind involve interaction in this age of social media of people having Donald a voice. Donald Trump versus Mrs. Clinton. It's Don't all need. about people power. You need to be able to find your own voice through these shows. Yeah. And you can't do that currently. You're less invested if you're not having a say. I'm not surprised people didn't watch. 
Exactly. What, what, what's honestly, the point? It's I not know. like we can affect, you know, the outcome. Yeah, we'll just watch on YouTube after the fact. <laughs> That's yeah. essentially the attitude I or would Or just have. watch the clip of whatever performer you want to see, you know. The one yeah. from your country. Well, I'll just, I'll just and, watch the music and, you video. Know, the reason they got rid of televoting is people weren't televoting. The numbers were going down. But even so, if people are voting less on the phone, have an app. Maybe that will help boost the voting. Have an app. To Online voting. Yeah, this is know. the way things are done now in 2016. Um, I just think it was a really bad move to get rid of televoting. And, you know, this is not discussed much, but in some countries people were only voting for a very small number of countries, so people said, oh, this is not statistically valid. Screw statistically valid. Let's just go with a popular vote. Because I'm sorry, a popular vote that's not statistically valid is more valid than five people sitting in a room who are supposedly experts. Oh, <laughs> Do you or, know what I mean? or, or, you know, a, a, you know, a, a TV producer, uh, you know, a, a record panel. label hacked. Let's talk about the expert panel. Who, uh, by the way, none of them are children. So, can you really say that an expert panel is an expert on children's music when they're not children? I think children know music better, children's music better than anybody else. Do you agree? Oh, I agree. And I think that if you are going to have these elements, I mean, they're not entirely terrible. No. But then the prizes should indicate something that warrants the presence of the So, you know, so like, for instance, if it's a record contract for a year yes. and, you know, putting this, uh, the winning child on... on uh, a tour program around Europe, then you can say, "What well, you need some adult intervention, yes. you know, to be able to kind of get the right person who can commit to that." But it's just a trophy, yeah. an identical trophy for first, second, and third prize. Yes. No distinguishing. No. Why do you need an adult to judge that? <laughs> yes. We've got to talk about the flags. The flags, again, you have this problem at Eurovision as well. It's great to have flags. It gives that sense of the Olympic Games, national spirit. But you need to think about camera placement, size of flags, where flags are allowed. Because there were too many times in the show where the flag was completely covering the screen. Go on our Instagram, look at that post. It's just not acceptable for viewers or for the performer. And yes, it's a split second, but the fact is, a split second in a three-minute time block is actually quite a lot of time. And you want these children to have their moment, and you want the viewers to enjoy the moment. And it's beyond a split second, because William and I were on ground in Malta, and we do take lots of Instagram moments, capture yes. lots of photographs, and the bulk of them had to be binned because there was a flag blocking Polly Genova's face, or blocking Alexander Minyok. It's unacceptable. I really think, do away with it. I would say, digital flags, we, they already <laughs> announced the countries. Russia. Bulgaria, yes. Malta, Yes. you don't need the flags. They'll appear on screen to those who are viewing at home. Do away with them. It's so unnecessary. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about the fact that Malta didn't actually have any interval acts besides Destiny. You know, they brought in Polly Genova. First of all, I love Polly Genova, and we were actually saying she should sing as an interval, but not at the expense of having other Maltese as Not as instead of, right, but in addition, in addition to. to. So I have Paula Genova, she was amazing. I loved that song. It was fantastic. But also have some Maltese acts. Ira Lasco, I know she had a baby. Or like a Chiara. Break her baby yeah. with her on stage. Yeah. Past Junior Eurovision acts from Malta. Federica Falzoni. She's amazing. Guy Gaia Couchy. The list goes on. It was weird to exclude Maltese performers. And also, I've got a We love this hologram up. though. Oh, hologram? Jed oh, Jedward. Yeah, Jedward's great, but again, at the expense of local talent. Yeah. Wanting to look better. I really don't know why they used adult dancers oh. for the introduction. This, again, is a kid's show, and one of the central dancers was a man with like a scruffy beard almost, who looked 17 times taller so than everyone else. Misplaced. Misplaced. Great for an adult show, but this is junior Eurovision people. It's like, who are you trying to appease? A sponsor? Are you trying to appease, you know, the CEO of your broadcaster? Think about your audience, because if you don't think about the audience, you're going to lose the audience. And that is what is happening. So ratings are tanking, tanking. because none of these considerations are being put into action. Yeah, and it needs just, to change. You know, and I, funny enough, the Junior Eurovision website was praising the YouTube views for their channel, which was, that's great, well done. But that does not translate into TV ratings. And TV ratings are what attract broadcasters, keep broadcasters around. You've got to focus on that. And frankly, everyone's YouTube views. And bloggers! Why do I want to go and cover a show that no yeah. one's going to watch? That's the <laughs> thing. You start to question, you know, can we afford to keep going to this event? I mean, it's not like we're getting any financial support from anyone. So it's like... 
you know, why cover an event if no one's watching the event? I mean, granted, our traffic did go up and our views did go up, but still, the broader incentive, we could just save the money and go to Eurovision and more national selections. Yeah, and yeah. even the comments section, uh, you know, we are sort of voicing what's being written a lot in the comments that, you know, these issues with um, children not having enough representation of the content. Yes. In any case, those are some problems that we've seen on social media coming from you guys. What other concerns, problems, questions do you have about Junior Eurovision? How can we save Junior Eurovision? Let us know here on Wimmy Blogs. Well, my first point is get Lizzie Pop to present the yes, show. Yeah, <laughs> we want Lizzie Pop to host the show. She'll be amazing. Yeah, so be sure uh, to like, subscribe, and add your comments at the bottom. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye! Bye.